covered, and insurers wouldn't be allowed to deny them coverage or to charge them exorbitant rates for actually needing to go to the doctor. And here is a perfect example of why this is gonna fail, why this doesn't work. Here we have a family who is living proof that once again, the American people were lied to. We have a, a family who liked their plan and wanted to keep their plan and can't, and now they've been denied coverage. So we'll have to keep you updated on just exactly what this family is going to do. But this is further proof that the government does not care about getting health care coverage for everyone. What they care about is those two pennies you have to rub together, and they want to figure out a way to take half. Youth enrollment is vital to the success of Obamacare, but the young and healthy just aren't lining up to pay exorbitant premiums on plans they probably won't use just to offset the cost for sicker consumers. In fact, only 24% of the 2.2 million people who've signed up for Obamacare were between 18 and 35, far below the 38% needed to make health care reform a success. If the young and healthy fail to sign up before the March deadline, insurers will have to raise prices next year. But what if people still fail to sign up for Obamacare next year, especially at a higher rate? Will the Affordable Care Act implode? Will insurers throw their hands in the air and defeat? Not likely considering that over the next decade, more than $1 trillion is expected to funnel from American taxpayers through Washington to health insurance companies. We will see a massive transfer of wealth occur in this classically fascist arrangement. You know, fascism, where a few elites and the biggest corporations collaborate with the government to bring everybody else down. But insurers also aren't concerned with low enrollment numbers because of the Risk Corridor Program. It's built into Obamacare and it limits the overall losses for insurers. In fact, American taxpayers are on the hook for 78% of any losses accrued by managed health care. So just like the bankster bailout, where we gave trillions of dollars to the criminals who tanked our economy, taxpayers may now have to bail out the health insurance agency if and when the law fails. We told you. The Affordable Care Act was written by the insurance companies for the insurance companies. Conservatives and Tea Party Republicans agree that Obamacare will fail, and some insist Obamacare has a built-in failure mechanism that will give rise to a coordinated lefty push for single-payer, a system in which the government, instead of private insurers, pays for all health care costs. Considering that about 80% of all Obamacare enrollees have already received federal assistance to defray the cost of coverage, those subsidies which are paid for by the taxpayer, and now taxpayers are also on the hook to cover any losses for insurers, well, it seems we've already morphed into a single-payer system. And that single-payer is you. All right, well, stay tuned after the break. David Knight is going to check in with Jakari Jackson and the rest of the crew, and you're not going to believe where they're finding this radiation now. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans. Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. 
Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend. You will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Welcome back. Now, if you remember, in the aftermath of Fukushima, we saw a debris field that some people described about the size of the state of Texas. And of course, the currents are going to bring that to the west coast of the U.S. And they predicted that would be happening right about now. Then we learned of elevated radiation readings on the west coast. So we sent a team of reporters from InfoWars to report on this. And Jakari Jackson and crew have been going up and down the west coast. And he's checking in with us with his latest report. Well, Jakari, what are your latest findings? Well, David, you know, we've been on our West Coast tour. We've gone as far north as Portland, Oregon. We're reaching the final stretch right now. We're in Playa del Rey, which is just a little bit south of Los Angeles at Doc Weiler Beach. And last night, David, we stopped by an actually functioning nuclear power facility. This is the Diablo Canyon nuclear power facility. And out there, we found radiation levels to be around 72 or so, around 70 CPMs. That's counts per minute. Keeping in mind that north of here at Half Moon Bay at Surfers Beach, they say the norm is around 30 CPMs. And at Half Moon Beach at Surfers Beach, excuse me, Half Moon Bay Surfers Beach, the radiation levels we found were in excess of 370, which goes to say that an actually functioning nuclear power facility has less ambient radiation than Surfers Beach. Wow, that's amazing. And yet even there, you're seeing what is about double what everybody says should yeah, be it's a, it's background about radiation. Double. Yes, David, out here, the ambient is around 72 CPMs counts per minute, still higher than what it should be, mm -hmm. but nowhere near what we encountered at Half Moon Bay. And David, I want to make another note about the nuclear power, uh, power facility at uh, Diablo Canyon. Out there, we caught a fresh fish. A gentleman was on the dock. He caught a fresh fish, and he let us scan it right there on the spot. That fish registered to be about 60 CPMs counts per minute, double of what it's supposed to be at Half Moon Bay. Well, that's amazing. You know, what we've got is essentially a new normal that is anywhere from two to two and a half times what it's been in the past. So we're looking at things that are about 60 to 70, 75 CPM. And the normal background radiation has been 30 CPM. But in, as you said, in places like Half Moon Bay, it was 370. So it's quite, quite a bit higher. Now, from here, where are you headed? You're, uh, you're south of L.A.? Are you going further down to uh, San Diego? Yes. So, you know, from Portland, Oregon, all the way down to San Diego, we'll hit a few beaches along the way, maybe a few other spots, and be on the plane back to Austin, Texas tomorrow afternoon, David. Well, it certainly is an interesting finding that you've got higher radiation at, the, uh, at that beach that started Surface everything. Beach. Yeah, surface beach. You got higher radiation there than you do outside of a nuclear power plant. But it's also interesting that the background radiation is so elevated everywhere. Oh, that's well, uh, that's very true, David. Even up in the Redwoods, we saw radiation twice of what it should be uh, according to the Half Moon Bay standards. Well, it's interesting. Well, we're certainly interested. I think people need to understand that this is what's going on there. This is something that's not being reported on by the government. It's not something that's being reported on by the media. They just uh, order extra potassium iodide pills <laughs> for themselves. Quietly. That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> quietly. Well, thank you very much, Takari. We'll be All looking right, thanks, forward David. to some more information. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Well, we have some more information about those shocking radiation readings, the comparison between the nuclear power plant and the beach. And Jakari Jackson has a man on the street interview with the people of California. Are they more concerned about fantasy football and the fantasy environmentalism of global warming than they are about real radiation levels increasing, even in the background radiation, increasing two to two and a half times normal? Here are those reports. From Portland, Oregon to now right outside Avila Beach, California, our documentation of West Coast radiation has brought us here to the Diablo Canyon Nuclear Power Facility. We've been doing this in light of top experts and researchers coming out with the information that a radioactive plume from Fukushima will contact the United States West Coast sometime in 2014. Now, we've been going all up and down the coast 
getting our numbers and checking the radiation levels. So we came here to contrast those numbers with the actual nuclear power facility. And we found the ambient radiation using our Geiger counter to be about 60 CPMs or counts per minute North of here in Half Moon Bay, the norm is considered to be about 30 CPMs or counts per minute. When we ventured to Half Moon Bay, we found radiation levels in excess of 370. So even though this is an active nuclear power facility, the radiation levels at Half Moon Bay are much higher than what we encountered here. We also went to the Humboldt nuclear power facility that's in the process of being decommissioned. It should be fully decommissioned by the end of 2015. Though those radiation levels there are still significantly lower than what we encountered in Half Moon Bay. Which begs the question that if an active nuclear power facility and a facility that's in the process of being decommissioned have significantly lower levels of radiation than Half Moon Bay, why is this not a national news story? Why is this not an international news story that these power plants are registering lower radi radiation than what is being found in Half Moon Bay? Why aren't people running through the streets? Why isn't the government doing something about this? Yes, the local news is reporting on this to an extent. You know, the, they, all, they always want to spin this and say this is global warming. It's this. It's that. I don't know. It could be thorium. It could be radium. Whatever it is, it's high levels of radiation at Half Moon Bay. So we'll continue to go south and find other radiation levels. Hopefully nothing near in excess of what we found at Half Moon Bay. But an active nuclear power facility has less radiation than Half Moon Bay. The people need to be told. Go to Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv for more reports. Reports have surfaced from top researchers that a plume of Fukushima radiation will contact the United States sometime in 2014. With that in mind, we've been on a West Coast tour. We've gone as far north as Portland, Oregon. Now we're back down in sunny California because right beneath this location, just a little bit south of San Francisco at Half Moon Bay, we encountered our highest radiation levels, over 10 times what's considered normal for that location. So we came up here to San Francisco, not too far away to see if these people are even aware of these issues. Hi, excuse me, how are you guys doing today? Are you guys aware of the bioaccumulation, the excessive level of radiation just a little bit south of here in Half Moon Bay? No. Are you a local resident? I am. Yeah. And, you, and you haven't heard about these radiation levels? No, no, I haven't. No, but I know about Half Moon Bay. That's a place that's always the wettest place in the U.S. Oh, is that is that a fact? Yeah, I, no, I don't know. Are you a local resident? Yeah. And this is your first time hearing this information? Uh, yes. Are you a local resident here? Yes. And you haven't heard about this information? What is this for? Well, this is for InfoWars.com. We're trying to tell the people out there about the excessive levels of radiation that are going on just a little bit south of here. No, I haven't heard anything about them. The highest levels of radiation have been centered right around here at Half Moon Bay, just a little bit south of here. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, sorry, I don't want to be on camera or quoted. Thank you. I don't like to be filmed without my permission. Okay, sir, I'll tell you that the NSA films you every day through your laptop, and also these traffic cameras film you too. So. Uh, they're filming you without your permission, too. Just be aware of that, sir. Have you heard about the melting starfish? No, that I have not. Uh, no, actually. You have not? Mm -mm. Well, sir, let me just ask you this. What type of information are you really into? What, what gets you up in the morning? What's the first thing you look for in the morning? Uh, I do, you know, have an interest in global warming, those kinds of large-scale environmental issues, but I can't say as I've heard of the localized radiation okay. thing. The government has purchased about 14 million doses of potassium iodide. Now, you use that to protect your body from radiation. Would it concern you to know that they're buying all this radi radiation protection and not informing the general public? Sure. Seems like they obviously know something we don't then. Would it be too much to speculate that maybe the government knows something that they're not sharing with the general public? Um, I, I think that's too I could not make that um, link. I don't want it to be a Republican's conspiracy to take over the United States again. A Republican conspiracy? Is it, I mean, is it a conspiracy that Steve Weiss, an electrical engineer who makes Geiger counters, went out there and found radiation levels of 1,400% normal, higher than normal? Is that a conspiracy, sir? I don't know if it's a conspiracy. It's just uh, an observation. Mm -hmm. After meeting all the awake, vibrant, lovely people just a little bit southwest of here in Half Moon Bay, I'm somewhat discouraged that about half the people we talked to today just had no interest in these issues. I guess they're more concerned with the 49ers or about their trendiness, their new iPhone or whatever else. But these are real issues and you need to take action. Sometimes just walking out here and talking to people can wake people up. Some people were very receptive of this information. And for the other people who may have been on vacation and just didn't care, we met people in Half Moon Bay who were on vacation and they care just as much as the people who 
live right there in Half Moon Bay. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv as we bring you more reports on our West Coast tour. Well, that's it for tonight's news. Now, if you would like to help Prison Planet TV support our operation, help us to file these kinds of reports and investigations that the mainstream media is not doing, that the government won't talk about, you can become a Prison Planet TV subscriber. Just one subscription will let you share.